Hi everyone, I am Anna and this is my YouTube channel about computer graphics. And today I want to talk about user interface in that brush, how to customize it, create hotkeys, create the palettes and to make the overall work in that brush more comfortable. But before we start, remember to subscribe to the channel and share this video on your social networks. I want to start with general recommendations and the first one is don't customize your user interface during your first months of working in that brush because that brush has a lot of tools, functions and brushes and that's why you need to learn them and you need to work out your own pipeline and only after that you can start customizing your interface. The second thing which I want to say is don't use somebody's user interface which you can download from the internet because the interface is designed for exactly this artist and only for him it is comfortable and you personally you need to work out your own pipeline your own interface which will be convenient exactly for you because with time you will need to adjust the interface of the artist whose interface you download it and uh, it, it is not really good because you will spend a lot of time in doing all these things it is better just to wait some time and to spend time on creating your own interface and now let's jump straight to that brush and learn how to customize it. First we go to preference and here we find the menu config. And from the very beginning we need to press enable customize button. When this button is on you can delete the functions from the UI which you don't need and add those which you need. Make sure one more time that the enable customize button is on. To get rid of the icon on your UI, you click and hold Ctrl Alt on your keyboard and then with the left mouse button, you click and hold the icon which you want to delete and drag it to the canvas. If you want to add to your UI the most often used brushes, then you need first of all to select this brush, then open the brush menu, find the small icon of the brush you need, and then with Ctrl Alt and left mouse button, drag it where you need. Same process we repeat with alphas and with materials. By default, the icons of brushes, materials and alphas are too wide and to my mind they occupy too much space on the user interface. We can make them smaller. To do this, we go to Preference, find here Interface, User Interface and deselect white buttons. And now we can add more brushes and alphas here. If you want to create your own menu and to place there your own palettes with functions, then you need to go to Preference, Custom UI and click on Create Menu. We can name this menu, press Enter and right now we have this new menu. We can drag it to right or left bar and now we can start adding the functions which we need to this menu. We are adding the functions to our new menu, same as to anywhere in our user interface. We can put here whatever we want. We even can put brushes here. Or alphas. Or materials. If you want to create a custom sub palette in your new menu, in this case, you need to go again to Preference, Custom UI, and here we have Custom Subpalette. We, we press Ctrl Alt on our keyboard and drag it to our menu. So now we have a Custom Subpalette and we can again start adding the functions we need to 
here. And you see, right now this custom subpalette works. If you want to rename your subpalette, you need to press Ctrl Alt on your keyboard and left mouse button. And right now you can rename it. We can say that this is my palette. And press Enter. You may want to change the user interface colors. Then you need to go again to Preference and here we have a menu Eye Colors. So now you need just to click on the color you want to change and drag your mouse to the color which you want to pick. And repeat it with all other colors. When we are done with our interface, we need to do three things. We go to Preference, Config, and unpress the button Enable Customize. Then we press Store Config here and Save User Interface. With pressing Store Config, you tell the brush to remember the interface and it will be loaded each time you open the brush again. And with the Save User Interface button, you physically save the user interface file and you can upload it to the brush again in case if you change your computer or install Windows or upload it to your computer in the office. If you want to go to the default interface, then you can easily do it by pressing Restore Standard User Interface. And if you need to bring back your saved custom UI, then you go here and press Restore Custom UI. Now let's talk about the canvas settings. My first recommendation is not to work on the canvas with a black gradient which we have by default. When working on the black canvas, you will face a situation when your shadow and your canvas are both black and you will be unable to define where is the canvas and where is the shadow. To get rid of the gradient, we need to go to the document menu, find the range slider and put it to zero. Now we don't have the gradient and our eyes feel much better. To change the canvas color, here in the document menu, we click and hold the back button, which means canvas actually, and drag the cursor to the color we want. My recommendation is to choose neutral gray color, not too dark and not too light. To save these changes, we need to press Save as Startup Document in the Document menu. But before, we need to clean the canvas from any project on it. If not, then every time you open the brush, you will open also the tool which is now on the canvas. In my case, it is a dock. So I need to deactivate Edit Mode. Press Ctrl N on my keyboard to clean the canvas and only now I go to the document menu and press save a startup document. If you want to change the startup material, and I recommend you to do it because for the eyes and for the whole perception of your work, it is better to work in the basic material 2 or in basic material 1. So you select the material you want to assign as the startup material. Then we go to the material menu and here we have the button save a startup material. This is it. Now let's talk about light box. This is called light box and it always opens when we start the brush. And if you don't want to see it at every launch, then you can just turn it off. To do this, we go to preference, find light box here and turn off open at launch. One more thing which distracts me a lot while working is cam view thumbnail and screensaver and we can turn them off and to do this we go to the cam view turn off cam view and thumbnail turn off thumbnail and screensaver turn off screensaver also in this video i want to speak a little about the quick save menu we can find it here in preference menu we have separate menu for it, quick save. And the first setting which we have here is maximum duration. By default it is 20 and it means that once in 20 minutes the brush saves your project in the quick save folder. The rest duration 
is one minute by default and it means that if you are out of computer for one minute then it will make an autosave file after one minute of your AVK. Maximum quick save files that is the number of files which the brush can create in the quick saves folder. You can change this number, don't change it to 100 because you can run out of free space on your drive and however you can delete all the quick save files created by ZBrush just pressing here delete quick save files. If you want to assign a hotkey to any brush or function then you need to find the function or brush which you want to assign a hotkey to. Press Ctrl Alt on your keyboard and press left mouse button. And now that brush asks you to press the key on your keyboard which you want to assign to. And when you click on it, here on top you see the note from that brush that the custom hotkey is assigned correctly. And after that we need to save. We go to preference and here we find hotkeys menu and press store. When you are finally done with customizing your set brush, remember, remember, and one more time, remember to go to preference, config, and press store config. This is crucially important. And the final tip which I want to say in this video is you may have the situation when you have broken that brush and you want to reset absolutely everything to default settings. In this case, you need to go to preference and here we have init brush. With this function, you will have that brush without all your any custom settings. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel and share this video on your social networks. Also check the description to this video and there you will find the links to my social networks, my art station and my Patreon. I also read all the comments so feel free to suggest ideas for my future videos. See you soon and may the inspiration be with you.